In this lesson, we are going to be talking about what tools you will need for this course and what other options you can use if you don't happen to have the tools available right now to give digital planning a try. Hi friends, it's Mary. Welcome back for lesson two of getting started with digital planning. In our first lesson, we talked about what is digital planning and why does digital planning have so many advantages? If you missed that video, I'll have the link in the description box below and I'll probably link it up here somewhere. If you are interested in this course, please be sure to hit the subscribe button because this is a five part course and the rest of the lessons will be coming later on this week. In this lesson, we are going to be talking about what tools you will need for this course and what other options you can use if you don't happen to have the tools available right now to give digital planning a try. Let's get started. First off, I want to take a moment and say that I completely understand that not everyone has an iPad Pro. iPad Pros are not cheap. I understand that completely, and they're not an option for everyone. I do have an iPad Pro, which is how I got started in this sort of paper digital planning space. However, you can use a regular iPad with a stylus if you like. You can even use your iPhone with a stylus. For those of you with Android, tablets and Android phones, you're going to ask me, can I use those for digital planning? The answer is complicated. Yes, there are options where you can annotate PDFs and use a stylus. Those options do exist. However, I was an avid Android user for many, many years, and I tried desperately to figure out a good way to digitally plan using a stylus and a PDF file, which is what we're going to be using throughout this course. Unfortunately, none of the apps that were available during the time that I was an avid Android user felt like a good fit for digital planning. The syncing was sloppy, the navigation didn't work well, it just did not work as seamlessly to me as an iPad does. I completely understand that that's disappointing, and honestly, there may be some good PDF annotators now that offer better options. I haven't used Android regularly in over a year, so hopefully there are some options in the Google Play Store that you may be able to find as a good fit for you. If you are looking for programs that will work in this way, the term that you tend to look for is a PDF annotator. What this means is you have a PDF file and you can write over it and copy and paste photos and things like that over it. If you are an Android user and you watch this course anyways and you find a PDF annotator that is just awesome, please be sure to let us know in the comments below so that others can hopefully learn from that. And if you are using an iPad that is not an iPad Pro or an iPhone for this task, know that you can totally use that. It just may be a little more frustrating because I have yet to find a stylus that works as well as the Apple Pencil with the iPad Pro. and. Obviously, the screen size and other things may cause a less than satisfactory um, experience overall, but it's worth trying, especially if you're just interested in digital planning and not sure that you really want to commit to an iPad Pro until you know for sure. I am using the iPad Pro for this course because I feel like it just gives the best experience overall, and it is what I use in my personal day-to-day -day life. So let's go ahead with what you will need if you want to follow along with me exactly on this course. The first thing you are going to need is an iPad Pro. I have the 9.7 inch, which I do not believe is being made any longer, but was a perfect fit for me at the time and is still a great fit for me. You will need an Apple Pencil. There are no different variations with Apple Pencil. Either you have an Apple Pencil or you don't. <laughs> You will also need a PDF file of a digital planner. There are a lot of different options as far as digital planning goes, I know. Um, I personally scanned my first digital planner, which was a happy planner. I don't personally recommend it, but if you want to know how I did it, the link will be in the description box below. I have also worked with some files that I've created, and I know that many people create their own files once they get used to it. We are not going to be covering creating your own files here in this video. I don't feel like that's a getting started topic so much. I feel like that's more of an advanced topic. But if there is interest in that, I may consider doing a course over that in the future. You can also find a free file or purchase a file that is a PDF file already created for you, often with hyperlinks and things like that to make the navigation really easy. And that is what we are going to be using for this course because I feel like it's the easiest way to get started with digital planning without feeling overwhelmed or like you have to do a lot of back work. In this course, I am personally going to be using the BrookBot Digi Bujanichi. Hopefully I'm saying that right. 
which if you are coming from the planar world is sort of a similar style to the Hobonichi, only in a digital format and perfect for bullet journaling. I'm using this to sort of give another overview for a different type of planner that you can use that I have not featured on my channel currently. It's not such a big deal during this course which one that I'm using, but if you are interested, I will link it in the description box below and you'll get a chance to see some of the features as we go about this course. Another awesome feature of the BrookBot planner that I will be using is that she allows you to have a free practice file. So if you want to try out along with me during this course before you buy her digital planner, then go ahead and follow the link in the description box below to get your free practice file there. And if you decide that you like her practice file and want to use it without the watermark on it, she does offer that for a contribution as well. I'll leave the link in the details in the description box below in case you want to know more about that. You will also need the GoodNotes program. Now GoodNotes does have a small cost with it, but it is a one-time cost. And I have found that I got my money's worth out of that. There are some PDF annotators that are free that I have tried for the iPad, but none seem to work as well with the features that they offer as good notes. So in this course, we will be covering good notes. Some other optional things that you can have during this course, if you want to follow along, are any sort of digital embellishments. I'm going to link a couple of free sticker pages that I'm a big fan of in the description box below. So you can go ahead and download those if you are interested in learning how to use those. We will be covering those in a future lesson. And also personal pictures. I love putting personal pictures in my digital planner. That is one of the most fun features of digital planning to me is that I can quickly put in my digital photos for memory's sake. <laughs> so if you are interested in that, pull a couple of photos that you like that you might want to put in your planner. And that is it. Simple as that. All you really need are the files, your iPad Pro, your Apple Pencil, and you are ready to go. Oh, another reason I love digital planning because I don't have to haul around paper and pens and stickers and pictures and embellishments. I love all those things. I love them all, but I love not having to carry them around and still getting a beautiful effect as well. That wraps up what you need for this course and what you need to get started with digital planning. I hope that you'll join me for our next lesson. And if you are interested in it, please be sure to hit the subscribe button below so that you will get notified when the next lesson is released. If you are loving this course so far, please be sure to share with a friend so that others can take part of this awesome course while it is free here on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Bye-bye.